The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents The Perfect Wife, starring Spring Byington and Ralph Morgan. Lisbeth Scott is your hostess. <laughs> More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. We've all had the experience of reading a story or seeing a picture or play that we considered inspiring. Most of us are thrilled by the example of courage in difficulties or patience and consideration in trials and suffering. We feel a desire to translate worthwhile example into action in our own lives. And in our own lives, too, we influence those we meet. Isn't this especially true in family life? In a home, the example of parents can be a constant inspiration to children. And in a home where children are unselfish and thoughtful, they too are an inspiration to parents. That's why family prayer, which brings God's blessing on a home, should be a daily practice in every home. Because every member of a family united together in simple, humble prayer to God is a great inspiration to everyone else in a family. Family prayer is the wonderful example of good living, God-loving parents and children. Lisbeth Scott will return later in the program. Now, Family Theater presents The Perfect Wife, starring Spring Byington and Ralph Morgan. There's hardly a person in Brightonville who can pass the Turner home on Oak Avenue without feeling a little guilty at having put off mowing his own lawn or trimming his hedge. And inside, the house is in the same beautiful order. Everything polished to a high shine. Not a stick of furniture so much as an inch out of place. You may wonder who's responsible for this model state of affairs. Well, anyone in Brightonville can tell you. It's Harry Turner's wife, Emily. She's in the kitchen now, humming to herself as she moves quickly from stove to refrigerator and back again. Mother, are you home? Oh, Nancy, I'm in the kitchen. Come on out, dear. Mm, mm, that smells good. What are you making? Angel food. I just put it in the oven. Mm. At three o'clock in the afternoon? I didn't have time this morning, dear. You're always rushing around, Mother. Well, I want to iron the bedroom curtains and get them back up. Oh, oh, look out, dear. Spread out those papers and walk oh. on them, please, dear. Okay. I just scrubbed that part of the kitchen floor. Uh-huh. And after all that, you decide to bake a cake. <laughs> well, it's been such a long time since I've made an angel food. I don't want to lose my touch. I doubt that that will ever happen. Don't throw your coat down there, dear. Hang it up in the closet. I'll only be a minute while I wash up these few dishes. Here, I'll help. Don't use that dirty towel. Get a clean one off the shelf. Yes, Mother. You know, I wonder if there'll ever come a day when I stop in here and you won't be baking or putting up curtains or washing or ironing or cleaning or... Well, there's a lot to be done around the house if you want to keep it looking spick and span. Mm, I guess there is. After you and Bill have been married a little longer, you'll be doing the same thing, dear. Mm, I don't know. I'm not so sure Bill would like it if all I did was just... Well, when you're a little older, you'll find out that a husband just won't stand for having a house all cluttered up and meals late and... Well, maybe... There, I guess that's everything. Uh, just hang the towel. Oh, not there, dear. Over near the window. All right. Anybody home? Why, it's Dan. I wonder what he's doing home so early. Uh, we're in the kitchen, Harry. Are you sick? Oh, oh, no, no, no. I have to meet a train. Oh, walk on the papers, Harry, oh, dear, oh, please. Oh, yes, yes. I was saying I have to meet our new personnel manager coming in on a 410. So I thought I'd just stop by here and put on a clean shirt. Want to make a good impression, you know. We consider ourselves pretty lucky to get her. her. Oh, is the woman? Yes, yes, she's a widow. Name's Brandon, Margaret Brandon. 
She's had a lot of experience in personnel work. Harry, please be careful of your ashes. I just cleaned this floor. Oh, oh, I'm I'm sorry, Em. Oh, I wish you wouldn't smoke that cigar out here. Not while I'm cooking, anyway. (laughs) I I, I guess I just forgot. Did you see Bill today, Dad? Yes, I saw him around the office. You know, he's looking disgustingly healthy these days, Nancy. What do you feed him? Well, promise you won't breathe a word of this to Mother? No, no, not a word. I just (laughs) opened a can and put it on the table. And he thrives on it. (laughs) If you can tell him when he wants a good home-cooked meal, he can come over here. Oh, say, that reminds me, Em. I wondered, well, since it's Mrs. Brandon's first evening in town, I, I thought it might be kind of nice to have her out here for dinner. You know, give her a little welcome. Oh, Henry, you can't do these things to me. I didn't plan on company. All we're having is... Oh, now, Em, it doesn't have to be anything special. Whatever you cook is bound to be good. You know that. Oh, besides, I'm finishing that room upstairs. You said you'd put the rugs down tonight. Oh, well, she'll go home early, and then I'll take care of them. Anything will be fine for dinner. Oh, dear, let me see. Oh, luckily, I do have a cake in the oven. And, Nancy, if you're not in a hurry, maybe you could run down and see if the butcher has some nice lamb chops. Surely, Mother. Then it's all right if I invite her? Oh, I guess so. But I do wish that you'd tell me about these things ahead of time, Harry. Yes, yes, dear. Oh, wait a minute, Nancy. I'll, uh, I'll drop you over the market on the way down. I'd better go to Mr. Peters for the lamb chops, Dad. Yes, and be sure they're lean and have him trim them. Oh, Dad, they'll be the way Mother always gets them or I'll be bringing them back. <laughs> I know that from bitter experience. Uh-huh. Mother wants everything perfect. Well, that's her big happiness in life. Having everything perfect. I guess I take after you, Dad. Hey, drop me at the corner here. It'll be all right. Take care of yourself, honey. I'll have to hurry to pick up Mrs. Brandon. By the time I get her fixed up at the hotel, we'll just make it back in time for dinner. I don't want to keep Mother waiting. Okay. Good luck, Dad. See you later, Nancy. It was a wonderful dinner, Mrs. Turner. No, Emily's quite a cook. Well, as I told Harry, I just wish he'd let me know a little earlier about your coming. Then I'd have had time to fix something really nice. Oh, but that angel food cake was the best I've ever tasted. Everything was wonderful. Thank you. By the way, I was just thinking maybe you ladies would like to go to a movie. There's a good one at the Reveille. Why, I'd... Oh, uh... Harry, not tonight. Well, Mrs. Brandon might like to. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mr. Turner, but I'd better be getting back to the hotel. Mm. I still have to unpack, you know. Oh, of course. Well, look, I'll drive you down. Hmm. Oh, please don't bother. I can just call a cab. I should say not. It's no trouble at all. Well... Now, you wait there. Excuse me, I- I'll go and back the car up. You know, Harry's always so anxious to make everyone feel at home. Yes, he's been very kind. Um, I uh, hope you're going to like it here in Brightonville, Mrs. Brandon. Oh, I know I am. You see, I came from a small town, and New York just never seemed like home to me. Now all I have to do is find an apartment. I guess that's quite a problem, even in Brightonville. Mm -hmm. Oh, you certainly have a lovely home here. How do you ever manage to keep it so spotless? Well, it's really a full time. Oh, that must be Harry. I'll get you things. Oh, my. What a lovely coat, Mrs. Brandon. It's a little thing I picked up in New York. Do you like the ballerina sweep? It's something new for Brightonville. It's becoming quite the style. Well, thank you again, Mrs. Turner. It was a wonderful dinner. When I get an apartment, I want you and your husband to be my first dinner guests. Thank you. I know Harry would like that very much. Well, good night. Good night. you? Yes, Em. Don't forget to turn off the hall light, Harry, dear. All right. What in the world took you so long, Harry? I was beginning to think something had happened. Oh, there was a mix-up. They'd sent four wrong suitcases to the hotel, so we had to drive back down and exchange them. Four suitcases? Well, you know how the way it is with clothes and everything. Yes. She dresses very well for a businesswoman. Yes, indeed. I think she's going to be quite an asset to the company. Somehow, though, I... I had the idea she'd be an older woman, having so much responsibility and all. Funny thing about that, Em. I remember looking over her record, and she's just about your age. Only a year or so younger. 
Oh, Harry Turner, you're joking. No. Well, I... Well, for heaven, of course. <laughs> she has all the latest styles from New York. Well, sure. And it's a lot easier to go in for clothes if you don't have a house and family to take care of. Yes, uh, I suppose it is. Hello? Mrs. Turner? Yes? This is Margaret Brandon. Oh, oh, yes. How are you, Mrs. Brandon? Fine, thank you. I found an apartment, you know, just last week. I'm glad to hear that. Well, I'm still in the process of moving in, but if you're willing to overlook that, I thought perhaps you and your husband would have dinner with me tomorrow evening. Why, I guess so. I spoke to Mr. Turner about it, but I thought I'd better call you to make sure. Well, I think that would be very nice. Good. I'll expect you then tomorrow about 7.30. <laughs> Mighty nice little place you have here, Margaret. Yes, Harry, I was lucky to get it. Well, I don't think it'll be so bad once I get things fixed up. Um, I thought I might paint that alcove a light green. What do you think about that, Mrs. Turner? Well, light color is pretty hard to keep clean. Yes, I suppose that's true, but it would make the room so much more cheerful. Say, if you need any help on the painting, just call on me. I did quite a job on the kitchen furniture last spring, didn't I, Am? <laughs> yes. The kitchen hasn't been the same since. <laughs> well, I might take you up on that. I'm pretty much of an amateur when it comes to painting. Oh, uh, would either of you like more coffee? No, thank you. Not for me. I'm full right up to here. Well, I'll just set your cups over here then. Now, I'd like to help you with the dishes. Oh, no, I'll have plenty of time to do them later. I'd rather just talk now. Oh, well, whatever you say. Um, Harry was telling me today about the annual office dinner party next week. I suppose you'll be there, won't you? Oh, I don't know. Harry usually goes to those things alone. Em doesn't have much use for getting all rigged up in evening clothes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was hoping you'd be there to lend me a little moral support. Well, I have much interest in office parties. Oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to show you that book I was telling you about. <laughs> a very pleasant evening, wasn't it, Em? Mm-hmm, yes. Uh, yes, it was, dear. Quite pleasant. Yes, sir. Margaret really has a knack for making a person feel at home. That's what makes her so good at a job. I did have to smile at that dinner, though, dear. Huh? Oh. Well, what was the matter with it? Well, everything's straight out of a can. It reminded me of eating at Nancy's. Well, Margaret works all day and doesn't have a lot of time to spend getting a meal. Oh, of course, I realize that. Besides, I... I thought it tasted pretty good. Well, Harry Turner, I never thought I'd hear you say that. You're always insisting there's nothing like real home cooking. <laughs> well, I guess the trouble is you just spoil me. You just spoil me too much, Em. More potatoes, dear? No, I've got plenty right here. Well, I may as well get the dessert then. I made an apple souffl uh, souffle for you this afternoon. Mm, sounds uh, great. I'll tell you what, though, Em. Maybe you better save my dessert till later. I told Margaret I'd be over early to, to get going on that painting. Oh, my goodness, aren't you through with that yet? You've been over there nearly every night for a week. Well, I think I ought to be able to finish it up tonight if I get an early start. Oh. Truth is, if I'd known what a job it was going to be, I might have been a little slow in offering my services. Mm-hmm. But a promise is a promise. You know that, Em. Yes, of course. Hello? Mother? Oh, hello, dear. I just stopped in for a minute. How's everything? All right, Nancy. I'm running downtown. Is there anything I can get you? Well, let me see. No, I think I have everything. I have to rush. I have an appointment at the beauty parlor. You know, tomorrow night's the party. Oh, uh, Nancy. Yes, Mother? I've decided to go to that office dinner party. You have? Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, I thought I'd better go this year. Oh, that'll be so delighted. Well, I hope so. Look, why don't you meet me downtown this afternoon, and I'll help you pick out a new evening oh, gown. Oh, I don't need a new evening gown. Now, Mother, you're not going to wear your black lace dress again, are you? Why not? It's just as good as it was when I bought it two years ago. But, Mother... 
Nancy, dear, I go to a formal party about once in a green moon. There's no point in my buying a new dress. Well, I'll arrange an appointment at the beauty parlor. I'm sure they'll be able to take you sometime tomorrow. Oh, good heavens, Nancy. Mother, we'll have you looking like a queen. It's out of the question, Nancy. You know Wednesday's the day for my general cleaning. Oh, Mother... You're not going to spend all day tomorrow cleaning. And why not? But you ought to get some rest. You'll be all tired out tomorrow night. Can't you clean Thursday morning? And when do you suggest I do my baking? Honestly, Mother. Sometimes I could just... Oh, please, Nancy. Now, dear, I'm not at all accustomed to being ordered about. But, Mother... I have my own way of doing things. And if I have a problem, I have my own way of working it out. What are you doing over in the corner all by yourself? Oh, hello, Mrs. Brandon. Well, I'm surprised at all these handsome gentlemen around that you're not dancing. May I sit with you? Of course. You know, I want you to see my apartment now that the alcove is painted. Your husband did a wonderful job. I don't see how I can ever repay him. Oh, that's not necessary. Harry gets a kick out of fluttering around. <laughs> I just hope he didn't mess up your apartment too much in the process. Well, I think you have to expect a certain amount of that, don't you? Well, nowadays it's difficult to know what to expect, Mrs. Brandon. Well, I beg your pardon. I, I'll bet you're Margaret Brandon. Why, yes. I just knew it. I'm John Clark of the advertising department. Oh, Been in town for do? several weeks. Just got back yesterday. Missed meeting you when you first arrived. Heard a lot about you, though, Mrs. Brandon. They say you're doing... Oh, I beg your pardon. Is this your mother? No, no. This is Mrs. Turner, Harry Turner's wife. Hey, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you. How do you do, Mrs. Turner? Well, uh, Harry's done a swell job getting up this party. Yes. Will you... Will you excuse me, please? Oh, Harry... Em, I was just coming over. I wanted to take you around to meet some of the new people. Harry, I wonder if I left the lights on in the parlor. I think I'd better go I home. Em, I remember distinctly... Harry, would you mind taking me home? But, Em, it's early yet. Harry, please, take me home. <laughs> Don't turn in, Harry. You better get back to the party. But, Em, I don't understand. You say you're not ill, but... Oh, please, Harry, let's not talk about it. But you have me worried. What happened? Oh, it, it's nothing. I guess I'm, I'm just not up to these things anymore. What do you mean? Well, I, oh, everyone seems so dressed up for the affair. Listen here, Em. What's getting into you? Why, you were the finest-looking woman in that whole group tonight. Oh, Harry, you don't mean that. Of course I mean it. No, you don't. Well, Em, what's wrong? Oh, Harry, please. I'll go in now. You better get back. Well, I, I guess I'd better. Good night, Harry. Em. Yes? You got me all upset. I just can't leave you feeling this way. I'm all right. I've got to work this out by myself. Well, maybe you're just tired. Yes, maybe. You know, after organizing everything, I, I can't just walk out. But I'll be back as early as I can. Yes, go ahead, Harry. Have a good time. Sorry I'm late for breakfast, Em. Oh, it's all right. Everything's waiting for you. I'll have to hurry. Just a cup of coffee. I guess things will be mixed up in the office this morning. Yes, I guess so. The party was a great success. You would have enjoyed it if you'd stayed. Yes. I'm sure I would. Uh, what's wrong, Em? Nothing, dear. Everything's fine. Oh, I wanted to tell you I'm running downtown. But I just can't understand what happened last night. Let's not talk about it now, Harry. I, I just thought I'd let you know I'd be out in case you phoned. Well, I'll drive you down. Will it be long in getting ready? No, now you're in a hurry, dear. Don't wait for me. I'll manage all right. Fourth floor, right away. Millinery suit scones. Fourth floor. Out, please. One side. Let Lady out. Thank you. Oh, I 
beg your pardon. Uh, it's quite all right. <gasps> oh, uh, Mrs. Brandon, how do you oh. do? Why, Emily Turner, how nice to see you. Are you going over this way? Why, uh, no, I was going over... Mrs. Turner, you know, I meant to call you this morning. Look, have you had lunch yet? Well, no, I... I think I'll go on home when I get through here. Why don't you stay down and have lunch with me? Uh, not today. Thank you. Oh, uh, please, just this once. I have some things to do. Uh, well, yes. Thank you. I will. Is this table all right? Fine. Oh, it's good to sit down. Things were crazy at the office this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, your work must be quite interesting. I like it very much. Harry says you're doing very well. I hope so. I guess we all like to feel that we're needed somewhere, don't we? Your orders, please. I... I'd like the salad plate. Mm, uh, that's fine for me, too. Mm, yes, ma'am. You know, I ran over here during lunch hour. I saw the cutest hat. A silhouette and a bicorn. I thought I'd get it. I was looking at a Renaissance toque. But I couldn't quite make up my mind. Mm, that would look very well on you. Thank you. I doubt if it's my style. By the way, I met your daughter Nancy down at the office the other day. Oh? She's a charming girl. Thank you. <laughs> Harry and I are very fond of her. You're very fortunate. Indeed I am. If nothing gets in the way to disturb things. Mrs. Turner, my husband died two years ago. Well, oh, I'm so sorry. As I look back, there's one thing I'm very happy about. You see, Jim and I couldn't have any children, so I kept on working. But I believe I can honestly say that I never let my work come before Jim's happiness. I felt that was so important because Jim had been badly wounded during the war, and we... You'll have to excuse me the way I'm just rattling on about myself and not letting you No, talk. no, dear, please, go on. But, oh, I, I do appreciate your kindness... Sometimes it's hard to be accepted in a small town. When you spoke of your home, it seemed that your husband was the center of everything. Yes, that's the way it was. Oh, we had some wonderful times together, Jim and I. I see. When he was able, we went places. and When he wasn't, we'd stay at home and read. And sometimes we prayed together. I understand. That's the sweetest memory for me because it seems in a way he, he's still with me. Yes. Uh, Margaret, I'm beginning to understand something that I didn't realize before. What's that, Emily? Well, it's... <laughs> well, maybe you laugh because it seems so simple. But it can happen that a woman may lose her perspective even in her own home. Yes. Like cooking and cleaning. You take such pride in their accomplishment that you begin to think that they're an end in themselves, rather than a uh, means of making your family comfortable and happy. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you wanted to talk to me about, isn't it? Of course, dear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Margaret, I've been thinking of getting a new dress. Would you have time to help me pick it out? <laughs> Anybody home? Em? Oh, that's funny. I wonder. Hmm. Hello? Nancy? It's Dad. Where's your mother? Is she over there? Why, no, I haven't seen her at all today. Dad, is anything wrong? No, that is, I... Well, I don't think so. But I just got home and she's not here. No sign of dinner or anything. It's nearly six o'clock. Well, that's odd. It's not like Mother to just... You don't suppose something's happened? Oh, of course not. I don't know what's gotten into her. She did mention going into town for an hour or two this morning. But nothing like this ever happened before. Oh, oh, Nancy, I'll have to hang up. Somebody's coming up the walk. All right, Dad. But call me if she doesn't get home soon, won't you? I will. Bye.
Well, Em, it's about time. Where in the world have you been? Oh, I'm sorry I'm so late, Harry. Late? I should say you are. Em, what have you done with your hair? Uh, do you like it? You have a new dress. Come here and let me look at you. Uh, well. Hmm. <laughs> Margaret helped me pick it out. Do you... I think it's uh, a little too young for me. Too young, my eye. Why, you look... You look wonderful. Are you, are you, are you going someplace? Is, is somebody coming? Uh, no, I, no. I just thought I'd do a little shopping. Whoa, whoa. I, I'd better hurry and get some dinner. Harry, I haven't even Wait a minute, it. Em. Why don't you forget about that? We'll go out for dinner together. No, Harry, night, Harry huh? I'll hurry, dear. It won't no. be a minute. Oh, sure. We'll go out to that little inn, Remember? The one out of Blackstone? Why, Harry, I'd love to. Swell! Oh, it's years <laughs> Just wait a minute, I'll get my hat. Oh, oh, oh. What's the matter, dear? I got ashes all over the floor. <laughs> the rug. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I can, I, I think I can. I... Oh, oh, let them go. They tell me ashes are good for a rug anyhow. They, they keep moths away or something like that. They do? Well, I'll be darned. You learn something new every day, don't you? You certainly do, Harry. You certainly do. You have heard the family theater presentation of The Perfect Wife, starring Spring Byington and Ralph Morgan. Here again is our hostess for tonight, Lisbeth Scott. Life can never be all happiness. Everyone goes through days of difficulty when there's misunderstanding and annoyance, when we need restraint and patience. But it is also true that the great joy of achievement lies in our baby being able to overcome obstacles and misunderstanding. Marriage should be, and can be, the most beautiful and rewarding experience in life. It is, when there is mutual trust and understanding when there is a sincere effort on the part of everyone in a family to be of help to everyone else. Little deeds of unselfishness and kindness in a home make a happy family, despite sorrows and sufferings. With God's help, there can be kindness and consideration in all homes. And family prayer is a wonderful way to bring this harmony and happiness into your home, because Family prayer unites all members of a family in close bonds of understanding and love. For your family, for every family, it is true. A family that prays together stays together. Before saying good night, I'd like to thank Spring Byington and Ralph Morgan for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Jane Speed for writing tonight's play and to Max Tear for his music. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Florence Ravenel, Cynthia Corley, and Tyler McVeigh. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Ward Bond, Richard Lyon, and Dan O'Herlihy in Son of Mine. Your host will be Eddie Cantor. This is Lisbeth Scott saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theatre broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need, and by a friend of the New York Foundling Hospital which cares for homeless and motherless babies without distinction of race, creed, or color. Be with us next week at the same time when our Family Theatre stars will be Ward Bond, Richard Lyon, and Dan O'Hurlihy, with Eddie Cantor as host, Tony Lofrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.